You can now get two free audiobook downloads and a 30-day free trial at audible.pagosity.tv. Your choice from the world's largest selection of over 180,000 digital audiobooks and spoken word content for your iOS or Android device, Kindle, or MP3 player. Go to audible.pagosity.tv now. Welcome to the Bogosity Podcast for the week of September 10th, 2017. The podcast that's got lumps of it round the back. This is your host, Shane Killian. Let's progesterate the news of the bogus. We'll start with a great article from Glenn Greenwald on the Intercept where he really gets it right about free speech. If you remember all the discussions surrounding the January 2015 murders of 10 Charlie Hebdo cartoonists, the prevailing narrative was that you couldn't disagree with what they were doing even while condemning the attacks. And when Greenwald and others did just that, they were accused of being anti-free speech. Now, whether you agree with Greenwald on Charlie Hebdo or not, the point is that he was against what Charlie Hebdo was saying and still argued for their right to say it. As Greenwald explains, quote, Criticizing the content of Charlie Hebdo's often vile cartoons became virtually blasphemous. It became common to demand that one not only defend the right of the cartoonists to publish them, but also to show solidarity one had to republish those cartoons no matter how much one objected to their content. A dangerous conflation was thus imposed between the right to express Idea X and one's opinion of Idea X. What was clear all along, and what I argued repeatedly, was that it was not a belief in free speech that was driving these demands that Charlie Hebdo cartoonists be honored and revered, and their cartoons be celebrated. Free speech was just the pretense, the costume. Indeed, most of the political leaders who led the free speech parade in Paris had long records of suppressing free speech, and few of these new free speech crusaders uttered a word as the free speech rights of Muslims have been assaulted and eroded throughout the West in the name of the war on terror. But recently things turned, quote, Charlie Hebdo published a characteristically vile cartoon depicting drowning victims of Hurricane Harvey in Houston as being neo-Nazis, with the banner that declared God exists, because, needless to say, white people in Texas love Hitler, and thus it's a form of divine justice if they drown. That led to a virtually unanimous tidal wave of condemnation of Charlie Hebdo, including from many quarters that, just two years ago, were sanctifying the same magazine for its identical mockery of Muslims. And he then gives a lot of examples from people like Piers Morgan and James Woods. Quote, It's almost as if the glorification and praise for Charlie Hebdo that became morally mandatory in 2015 had nothing to do with free speech and everything to do with love of the anti-Islam content of Charlie Hebdo's cartoons. This new rule that one must not only defend Charlie Hebdo's free speech rights, but also honor and praise his work, seems to have disappeared rather instantly, violently even, as soon as its targets stopped being Muslims and began being white Americans. Charlie Hebdo was fun, delightfully provocative, bold, and deserving of awards when it was publishing Mockery of Muslims. When its cartoonists began publishing exactly the same sort of thing aimed at white Americans, they became vile, evil, despicable, losers, and traitors. Let this episode bring about the full and permanent death to the new warped principle that to defend free speech, one must celebrate the ideas under attack and honor those expressing them. It should have never been difficult to grasp the basic yet vital distinction between defending the right of ideas to be expressed and celebrating those ideas. Now that a Charlie Hebdo cartoon has been aimed at white Americans, offending white Westerners, it seems the wisdom of this principle has been rediscovered. We can only hope, Glenn. We can only hope. Say, if you're tired of the promos in this podcast, well, the patrons got it early and with no ads or promos. Just go to patreon.bogosity.tv and donate at any level. Do you have children or nieces or nephews? Are you homeschooling or just want to counter some of the socialist indoctrination most children get in school? 
If so, go to bogosity.tv slash Tuttle Twins and you'll be taken to a website where you can get some great books for elementary age children. The Tuttle Twins books are books about liberty and free market economics that include children's versions of Bastiat's The Law, Leonard Reed's I Pencil, and Hayek's The Road to Serfdom, as well as books about the Federal Reserve and how regulations protect business cronies. They'll learn about the harm caused by eminent domain or regulations passed in the name of safety and fundamental concepts of liberty. And as you can see from the sample pages on the website, they're all easy to read and nicely illustrated. They're just $9.99 a piece, or get a special discount as well as free bonuses when you purchase all five. You can even buy in bulk to donate to schools and local libraries. So get the Tuttle Twins books at bogosity.tv slash Tuttle Twins. So you knew the stupid would come in droves in the wake of Hurricane Harvey. We'll see a particularly dumb example later in this podcast, but here's one with an interesting wrinkle. People saying that Houston got flooded because it doesn't have zoning. Like it had nothing to do with having 19 trillion gallons of water dumped on it. The Guardian wrote, The real villains in Harvey Flood, urban sprawl and the politicians who allowed it. Newsweek wrote, Houston is drowning in its freedom from regulation. The Washington Post called it Wild West Growth and blamed it on a lack of urban planning. The thing is, zoning is generally a cause of urban sprawl. You generally get more of it with zoning. Houston's highest elevation is only 80 feet. Downtown, it's only 50 feet. And that goes all the way down to zero feet at the coast. Why did it get flooded after a massive hurricane? Gee, let me think. They claim that because of Houston's development, it can't absorb as much water. First of all, they failed to say how that would have been better with zoning. Second, even without any development, it would only have been able to absorb 4 billion gallons more than it can now. Harvey dumped about 5,000 times that amount on Houston. Before Houston's sprawl, the Buffalo Bayou would rise 54 feet during a flood. At Harvey's worst, it only rose 40 feet. So it was actually working better by comparison. In fact, Houston has more permeable land compared to other cities. 39% of its land is paved compared with 41% in New Orleans, 54% in Los Angeles, and 61% in New York City. This serves as yet another example of how few arguments statists have to support their absurd religion. If you're on the Wi-Fi in a coffee shop or hotel, anyone on that network can get your traffic. Do you really trust all of those strangers? For that matter, do you really trust your ISP? A VPN can protect you from prying eyes, disguise your location, and even foil government sensors. It's essential in this day and age. So go to vpn.pagosity.tv and you'll be taken to BoxPN. Starting at just $2.99 a month, you can get unlimited high-speed connections to VPN servers all over the world. And they don't log connections, so your privacy is assured. Traveling abroad, just VPN home, and don't worry about what those other governments are doing. Back at home, stop your ISP from traffic shaping and messing with the quality internet access you're paying good money for. You can connect from multiple machines at once, including your smartphone or tablet, and it supports all the secure standards, including OpenVPN and SSTP. Bypass sensors and surveillance with your own secure VPN connection. Go to vpn.pagosity.tv. So the Department of Homeland Security under Donald Trump has declared Antifa a domestic terrorist organization. You know Antifa, right? Well, maybe not if your only source of information is the mainstream news, because they don't want to seem to mention them at all, and don't you know the only protesters at Trump's inauguration were good and decent people who would never smash windows and trash cans and set cars on fire and beat people up? So when Trump declared them a terrorist group, it's only because Trump is a horrible racist Nazi and literally Hitler, because it's not like the Obama administration would ever, ever do that. Except, in fact, they did. A confidential joint assessment by the DHS and the FBI obtained by Politico showed that as early as April 2016, federal authorities believed they were instigating violence at public rallies. One official said, quote, It was in that period, and that's the rise of the Trump campaign, that we really became aware of them. 
These Antifa guys were showing up with weapons, shields, and bike helmets, and just beating the shit out of people. They're using Molotov cocktails, they're starting fires, they're throwing bombs and smashing windows. So they launched a global investigation to determine if Antifa's violence will escalate, even to the point of including bombings. They found that some Antifa members had gone overseas to countries like Turkey to learn how to engage in terrorist and street fighting tactics. It's Antifa that shows up wearing masks and throwing bricks and Molotov cocktails and attacking people. And they are absolutely doing this to scare people into affecting a political change. That's pretty much the definition of terrorist group right there. This is why law enforcement agencies need to stop coddling Antifa and kowtowing to them, blaming organizers when Antifa turns things violent. Antifa is the problem. Law enforcement needs to be targeted at the instigators of violence, whoever they are. And time after time after time, that's been shown to be Antifa. Going on the way they have just means they're allowing Antifa to decide what assembly should be allowed and which ones should be shut down. We live in a world where light bulbs connect to the internet, and recent attacks on them prove that your online security is under threat like never before. Not only your websites, but the internet-enabled devices you buy. And the biggest problem is weak passwords. That's why you need LastPass. LastPass allows you to randomly generate strong, unique passwords on the web and on your internet-enabled devices, all protected by one master password. LastPass sets up in minutes and gives you secure automatic logins throughout the web, synchronizing across all your browsers, all your computers, and even your mobile devices, at home, at work, or on the road. It even securely stores sensitive form data, including credit card numbers, backup sensitive documents, software licenses, Wi-Fi logins, and more. And with LastPass Premium, you can get these benefits on other applications, manage passwords for your entire family, and also get priority customer support. Sign up at password.bogosity.tv for a free month of LastPass Premium. Log in securely everywhere using the last password you'll ever have to remember. Go to password.bogosity.tv and get LastPass now. And now it's time to de-instigate this week's biggest bogan emitter. And this week it goes to Laura Dunn, a lawyer and professional victim who just doesn't like that whole innocent until proven guilty thing, and has gone so far as to say that it shouldn't apply in Title IX cases. She wrote, quote, A presumption of innocence advantages the accused only, and Title IX requires equity. No presumption should be made either way, and schools should engage in an inquisitorial process to determine the truth, rather than artificially favor the accused going into it. No one expects the liberal inquisition! I guess she was out partying that day in law school where they covered why this was so important. Not just for accused guilty parties, but for the innocent as well. It's not only implicit in the Bill of Rights, it's explicit in the UN Declaration of Rights. What does it say when the UN knows more about rights theory than you? The fact is, not just the accused, but all of us benefit from justice and due process, and all of us are put at risk when these are abrogated. Dunn also said that she 100% disagreed with the right of the accused to have an attorney present. Quote, This is not court. This is a campus process, and there is no due process right to assistance of counsel, but there is a federal right to have an advisor of choice, and that is more than sufficient. We know since we do this every day and feel completely capable of successfully assisting our clients. Her record also shows that she's more of a listen-and-believe type than a burden-of-proof type, which would explain both these stances. Dunn was responding to a report by FIRE, the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, which found that three-fourths of America's elite universities do not guarantee presumption of innocence in sexual misconduct proceedings. 43 out of 53 scored a D or F on their due process proceedings. They found, quote, Colleges today investigate and punish offenses ranging from vandalism and housing violations to felonious acts of sexual assault, taking on the responsibility, often at the behest of the federal government, to punish offenses that are arguably better left to courts and law enforcement. 
But this willingness to administer what is effectively a shadow justice system has not been accompanied by a willingness to provide even the most basic procedural protections that should accompany accusations of serious wrongdoing. Dunn is even at odds with law professors at Harvard University who released a joint statement asking the Department of Education to revisit Obama's Title IX guidance that is the source of much of this erosion of personal liberty and due process. Hopefully they'll do some good. In the meantime, there can be few people as deserving as Laura Dunn of the title of this week's Biggest Bogani Emitter. If you're going to shop online, use our special links to shop at Amazon. Clear your cookies and go to Amazon.Pagosity.tv, and you won't pay a penny more for your purchase. If you haven't used the mobile app in the last 12 months, or even at all, go to Get5.Pagosity.tv on your phone or tablet and get $5 off your order of $10 or more. Go to Prime.Pagosity.tv for a free 30-day trial of Amazon Prime and enjoy thousands of movies and TV episodes, borrow Kindle books, and get unlimited two-day shipping for free. And speaking of Kindle, go to Kindle.Pagosity.tv for a 30-day free trial to Kindle Unlimited, read over one million books, and listen to thousands of audiobooks on any device. You can go to music.pagosity.tv and get a free 30-day trial of Amazon Music Unlimited with access to Amazon's entire library of 10 million songs, ad-free and with unlimited skips, and even download to listen offline. All great ways to help this podcast simply by shopping at Amazon. And now let's psychofraculate this week's Idiot And this week it goes to CNBC. And you remember how earlier in the podcast we were promising more stupidity about Hurricane Harvey? Well, CNBC is saying that Harvey may actually give us an economic boost. Could have made money betting someone would say that. Yes, it's our old friend the broken window fallacy. But it's funny how you never see cities making improvements by evacuating everyone and bombing themselves. CNBC said that the storm could boost GDP by $30 billion, because that's the estimated cost of fixing the damage from the storm. But all that will do is get Houston back to the state it was in before the hurricane. So how is that going to make people's lives better? See, this is why I have such a big problem with leftists claiming that we libertarians only care about the dollar amounts and never consider the benefit to actual people. Once again, we see it's the other way around. They also said, quote, Hurricane Harvey could put some spark back in inflation if gas prices keep rising and the rebuilding results in a national shortage of construction workers or puts pressure on building materials prices. Wait, inflation is good? Quote, competition for construction workers could raise wages and prices for autos and lumber are expected to rise. Oh, so now price gouging is good too, I guess. Don't look for consistency among leftists. I really have to wonder, though, how much of this is author Patty Dom and how much is CNBC editing her. She almost certainly didn't write the headline in bullet points, and aside from reiterating this absurd claim in the opening paragraph, most of this article is just about the damage Harvey caused. So I don't know how much of this is her and how much of this is her editors. But this includes the $30 billion in property damages as estimated by Goldman Sachs, the ninth largest since World War II, and its impact to the energy sector could cause its growth to fall by 0.2 points after losing 16.5% of the country's refining capacity. But, I mean, I suppose you could increase employment and economic activity by bombing a major city and hiring lots of people to rebuild it, but it hardly seems worth it. So that's why CNBC takes this week's Idiot Extraordinary. Well, that wraps up this. I found the best thing to do with a new employee is to size them up with a long, hard stare edition of the Bogosity Podcast. Come join the discussion at forum.bogosity.tv and feel free to send a question, statement, news article, or rant in text or audio to podcast at bogosity.tv. This podcast depends on you to keep going, so please donate using the links on the website or the QR codes in the thumbnail or become a patron at patreon.bogosity.tv and get the podcast and YouTube videos early and without ads or promos. 
Thank you for listening. Until next time, here's a quote from Henry Hazlitt. The whole gospel of Karl Marx can be summed up in a single sentence. Hate the man who is better off than you are. The Bogosity Podcast is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution on Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. Bogosity. Want answers to creationist claims against evolution? Would you like to know more about evolution yourself, or even engage creationists more directly, with actual peer-reviewed sources to back you up? My book, How Evolution is Scientific, is designed to show the basics of evolutionary theory and how it is so well supported using the scientific method. It's impeccably sourced, with references to the actual scientific material, and is arranged using the creationists' own criteria of what is scientific. Using their own arguments against them, see how evolution is scientific, but creationism is not, based on observations, accurate predictions, logic, and evidence. Get answers to common creationist claims, and even a primer on abiogenesis, the start of all life. It's all in my book, How Evolution is Scientific, available at Amazon and on Kindle, EPUB, and PDF as well. Get How Evolution is Scientific and never be taken in by creationists again.